one of the most iconic monsters to face against Kirby. So iconic, in fact, that he even landed a spot as a boss in Smash Ultimate. Marks. This armless jester wants nothing more than to cause mischief and chaos, and the lengths that he went through to achieve that were quite literally astronomical. The little gremlin somehow got the sun and the moon to start fighting, and tricked Kirby into seeking out the powerful wish-granting comet Galactic Nova to get them to stop. Only for Marks to then snipe the wish for himself, wanting to have complete control of the planet Popstar so that he can cause all the mischief his wicked heart desired. But Kirby, of course, was able to stop him. Twice. And put an end to his schemes. Nowadays, Mark seems to be willing to help Kirby out on his adventures. Well, so long as he's kept fed, anyways. Mark's when coming to Smash would be such a freaky character, as there really doesn't seem to be much limitations as to what he's able to do. That we know of, anyways. So this allows me to get creative. And to get right into things, Marks would be a rather floaty, lightweight character. And also just like Kirby and Meta Knight, he'd have a total of six jumps, using his demonic wings for all that extra height. But also just like Kirby and Meta Knight, he'd have no additional movement options. Marks could have a three-hit jab that could lead into a rapid jab. The first hit could be a quick little kick, the second, a side kick with the other foot, and the final hit can have him quickly pull up one of his wings and swing horizontally forwards, swiping with his claw. And if you choose to use the rapid jab, he could use one of his many original attacks from Kirby Superstar, Marks' debut game. The needle attack, where a barrage of needles quickly stab forwards. His dash attack could be his rush attack from Kirby Star Allies, which will have him simply fly straight forwards with his wings out for a flying tackle. This dash will only hit once, launching foes a fair distance if it connects. For Marks' side tilt, it's time for me to get a little creative. It could have Marks belch out a quick energy explosion from his mouth. It hits hard, but does have a bit of end lag. The up tilt could have Marks use his thorn attack. It'll have Marks quickly grow a single vine of thorns straight up from behind himself to deal quick stabbing damage. His down tilt could have Marks swing his tongue horizontally forwards low to the ground. Oh, and his tongue will also be covered in spikes, because why not? For the side smash, it could have Marks fire a blast of beams from his eyeballs. This smash can be angled based on controller input. This makes slight reference to one of his brand new attacks that he was given in Ultimate, which was... a lot creepier there. For Marks' up smash, he could use the Shadow Uppercut, a move where he disappears into the ground and then flies straight up, attacking with his whole body while his wings are spread out. For Smash, while Marx is charging the move, he'll actually disappear into the ground. And as soon as the attack is released, he'll fly straight up with his wings out, turning his whole body into a hitbox. He'll actually fly a decent distance into the air, and will stay at that apex even when the attack is over, being able to move right then and there. This overall makes this move pretty hard to punish with close combat unless you're able to time your attack just right when the attack concludes with an aerial attack or a high hitting move. He can't even be hit while he's charging underground, so it's best that you wait for an opening when you see this move happening instead of trying to be reckless, just like when you have to fight him during his boss fights. His down smash can have him use the spit drop, an attack where Mark spits an icy bomb out of his mouth straight down, which then spreads out into two horizontal ice balls in opposite directions when it hits the ground. It'll pretty much do this for Smash, moving Marks' hitbox upwards when he uses it and sending two ice ball projectiles horizontally towards both sides for a decent distance. This Smash would also have the capability to freeze opponents who are at high damage percents, which will increase how far they're launched. Marks' neutral air could have him use his air cutters, an attack where he summons four crescent-shaped blades to attack. For Smash, he'll summon the four gales and they'll quickly spin around his whole body multiple times, It'll be a move that deals multiple punching hits of damage before launching foes with the final hit. His forward air will be some real nightmare fuel, as he'll quickly enlarge and bulge his eyeballs out to hit any foe in his line of sight. This, once again, makes reference to that creepy new attack that he gets in Ultimate. The back air could also make reference to another new attack that he got in Ultimate, where he replaced his wings with vein-like tentacles. It could have him quickly grow these veins from one of his sides and eerily wiggle them towards the back to deal multiple flinching hits of damage before launching foes with the final hit. His up air could have Marks morph the two tips of his hat into impaling spikes that stab straight upwards, and his down air could have him use his Marks Flip Ultima from Star Allies, a move where Marks dives straight down to deal damage to anyone in his path. 
Now, in Star Allies, this move actually had Marks dive into the ground and would automatically use the Shadow Uppercut right afterwards. So to make reference to this, this down air could have a very unique feature to it. For Smash, normally this move will just have Marks stop at the ground, but if you're able to perfectly time a press of the up smash command right before Marks hits the ground when using the down air, he'll actually cancel out of it straight into his up smash effectively having Marks use his Flip Ultima straight into his Shadow Uppercut, just like he does in Star Allies. The only thing about doing this is that you will not be able to charge up the Up Smash when you cancel the Down Air into it. He'll just automatically use it. This does mean that it could be conceivably spammed if your timing is impeccable by canceling the Down Air into the Up Smash, and then just use the Down Air again right after the Up Smash since said Up Smash leaves Marks in the air after it's used. However, I should mention that both of these attacks can only attack vertically, and since the hitbox is just Marks' body, generally most characters with projectiles or disjointed hitboxes can easily punish Marks out of this if the Marks player does choose to spam it. For Marks' grab, it could have him use the Prank Kick, a move from Star Allies where he turns enemies into balance balls as he spins them under his feet. For Smash, it could have Marks grab, quote unquote, with a type of kick, and force his grabbed foe under his body as he balances on top of them. He would pummel by spinning them even faster to rack up damage. The forward throw would have him just kick the foe forwards, just like he does for his prank kick in Star Allies. The back throw could have him roundhouse kick the foe towards the back. The up throw could have him dive down with the foe into the shadows, and then do a short shadow uppercut out of the ground with the foe overhead, sending them into the air. And the down throw could have him just stomp the foe into the ground, burying them. For Marks' his neutral special, he could use his ever-iconic Jester Ball. Well, at least the version of it from Star Allies, anyway. This would be a special with quite a number of versatile options. Just tapping the special button will have Marks spawn a Jester Ball under his feet to balance on. While in this state, he could move left or right and do a single jump, but he cannot turn around. He's forced to face into the direction he was looking when he brought it out. Now, as for the ball itself, this is not your ordinary beach ball. It's actually a bomb. If you tap the special button again while balancing on the ball, Marks will just kick it forwards as a projectile. Being a ball, it'll ricochet for a bit off of the ground, walls, or ceiling, and after about a second and a half, will explode into a small amount of fireworks. The ball, however, will automatically explode if it makes contact with anything that isn't the stage, whether that be an item, projectile, or another player. Not Marks, though. He won't be affected by his own bombs unless it's reflected, of course. Now there are a few more options than just that. If you hold down the special button while balancing on the ball, Marks will ready for a kick, but won't actually kick the ball until the button is let go, and you will be able to angle the trajectory of where he kicks the ball based on controller input. If you're moving forwards and press the special button, Marks will kick the ball, but it'll fly a little farther and faster than normal thanks to the extra momentum. And finally, if you choose to press either up or down on the control stick along with the special button, Marks will just jump off his gesture ball and leave it there, where it'll explode after three seconds instead of just the one and a half seconds. The ball cannot be moved from its spot when left there like this, and it will still automatically explode if anything but Marks touches it. This can allow the ball to be used for some scary stage control, but it could also turn it into a makeshift shield to use to intercept incoming attacks. Marks will only be able to have one Jester Ball out at a time, and must wait for any current one to explode before he can pull out another one. For Marks' side special, he could use his devastating Mouth Beam. Literally just a hyper beam that Marks fires from his mouth. This could be a high power, high kill potential, high shield damaging move that will have a 3 second long start lag and will fire a huge beam straight forwards horizontally. The beam will deal a lot of multiple flinching hits of damage before launching foes with the final hit, and it travels about the distance of the battlefield stage's leftmost platform to rightmost platform, and you will be able to turn this attack around during its 3 second start lag. Now, of course, this attack does sound scary, but there are a good number of downsides. For one thing, on top of a 3 second, very easily punishable start lag, it also has an uncomfortable amount of end lag. For two, unlike what we see from this move during the boss fights where the beam lasts for like 3 seconds, for Smash, the beam will only last for a little more than 1 second, making it very easy to get around without too much worry. 
And finally, this move does have a nasty amount of kickback for Marx, meaning that he will be pushed back opposite of the direction he fired the beam, but this is more of a double-edged sword, as this could help with increasing the distance from foes just in case the beam misses, but it could also push Marx towards players behind him. And this kickback will not move Marx past foes, it'll just push him into foes, making for easier punishes for said foe. Marx also will not be forced off of the stage or platform he uses it on if used next to a ledge. He will just stop at said ledge. And unlike other high power moves like Ganondorf's Warlock Punch, the Mouth Beam will have absolutely no super armor on it whatsoever, meaning that it can be interrupted by pretty much anything, whether during the start lag or even during the firing. So overall, the Mouth Beam is definitely a high-risk, high-reward type of attack that should only be used sparingly. Now for Marx's up special, it'll just have him teleport just like he does in his boss fights. Part of the Mel works pretty much just like Mewtwo and Palutena's. And it will put him into free fall, so you can't just abuse it like he likes to do in his own boss fights, unless you can pull off that ledge-canceling teleport that advanced players like to do. I still need to learn how to do that. Anyways, finally for his down special, it could have Marx use his split powers. Attacks that involves him splitting his body in half to bring out some devastating attacks. This will be an auto charge space special, where holding down the special button will charge it up, and letting it go will have him automatically let the attack loose. But unlike other auto charge specials, charging doesn't increase its power, but will instead outright change what kind of attacks he'll use. Simply tapping the down special command, or not charging it for very long at all, will have Marx use his Reign of Paintball attack, like we see him use during the fight with his soul in the Superstar Ultra True Arena. When his body splits, the two halves will turn into paint globs that will then shoot a lot of paintballs a fair distance into the air and then rain down a little bit around Marx. These paintballs only deal small flinching damage, but getting hit by them will coat the foes in paint and will take extra damage from all attacks for as long as the paint remains to be stuck to them, just like with the Inklings. Marx will not be able to move until this attack concludes, which takes about 3 seconds, and it does have some end lag. On top of that, Marx is not invincible during this. He will have heavy armor so it can't be interrupted, but you can attack the paint globs to deal damage to Marx while he does this. But since there are paintballs flying everywhere around him, that might be a little hard to do unless you have long-range options. The paintballs do also count as projectiles, so they can be reflected, though reflecting them towards marks might be a bit difficult unless you can reflect them from above. Now if you can charge this move for at least 3 seconds, marks will instead use another attack that he used during the fight with his soul. His Energy Ball Attack where the two halves of his body will turn into energy balls that will then fly outwards into both horizontal directions away from each other. These energy balls deal a decent amount of damage and knockback, travel a fair distance, and they will not disappear upon colliding with anything. In fact, these won't even count as projectiles, just moving hitboxes, and Marks will be completely invincible during this attack. The downside, however, is that the energy balls are easily shieldable, not dealing very much shield damage at all and they do move kinda quickly, so dodging past them should be no problem either if you can see them coming. And of course, there is a bit of end lag on this move, leaving marks open for punishment if not used effectively. And the final, most dangerous form of the split will happen if you're able to charge the attack for 6 seconds or longer, meaning that it will be the hardest to pull off. It will have marks create his deadly black hole, which will do exactly what you'd think a black hole would do. Anything too close will be pulled in. Items, projectiles, assist trophies, and of course, other players. Players pulled in will be dealt a large amount of damage before being spat out a fixed distance straight into the air, meaning that it is impossible for this attack to get a KO unless you can somehow use it right next to the ceiling blast zone. This will happen to assist trophies too, but items and projectiles will just disappear lost to the void forever. Rest in pieces, the ones that are alive. The black hole cannot be interrupted once it starts, and Marx is completely invincible for its 3 second duration, but of course, he cannot move while it's active. Now like the others, this move will have an uncomfortable amount of end lag, in fact even more so than the others, but that's only if it fails to suck anything in. If it does absorb something, even something as small as one of Mario's fireballs, the end lag will be significantly reduced, as if Marx got the necessary nutrients from his capture to not get fatigued afterwards. 
A couple more side notes for the split down special as a whole. Unlike in Star Allies, where charging the black hole suspends marks in the air, charging up this special will not do that for Smash. He will still fall normally while charging it up. However, he will remain suspended in the air for the whole duration of whichever attack he chose to use, with him falling a little bit during the end lag after it concludes. With that said, you're only going to be able to use the down special once while airborne, and must touch the stage before it can be used again. This way, lame players won't try to remain suspended forever over the blast zone for long periods of time. Overall, Marx's attacks reflect his boss fights, as well as just Kirby bosses in general. Heck, even King Dedede and Meta Knight, post Brawl, were given the same kind of gimmick and theming. A lot of devastating attacks, but they're always left vulnerable afterwards so Kirby can get some damage in. Just be patient, wait for the attack to end, then swoop in for the kill. Marks could have a terrifying final smash that will even give the Majora's Mask Moon a run for its rupees. Marks will make a wish on the Comet Galactic Nova. And what will that wish be? To destroy everyone. This will be a cinematic final smash where Marks will create a quick black hole and all foes too close will be pulled in. The cinematic will then play out with the foes being taken into the middle of space, where suddenly Nova will appear and run straight into them, dealing big damage and launching the foes when the cinematic ends. This final smash overall, of course, makes reference to when Mark's wish to control Popstar, leading Nova to attempt to try to collide with the planet to fulfill the wish. That is until the squalling sun and moon help to stop it from doing so, giving Kirby enough time to destroy it and Mark soon after. For colors, Marx of course would be defaulted to his pink body and half-red, half-blue Jester hat. I should also make mention that Marx will, for the most part, be fighting with his wings retracted, if that wasn't obvious enough, with them only coming out for the attacks that use them or when he double jumps. His first alternate color could have him be yellow, the player 2 color in Star Allies, then next can be blue, the player 3 color of Star Allies, and then next can be green, the player 4 color from Star Allies. Next can just be a red color, no reference to anything, it's just an original color. Here we have a pale monochrome color, which not only goes with the Kirby character's usual retro color theming, but also references the pale coloring of the first Milky Way Wishes cutscene from Superstar, which was the first cutscene to ever show Marx. Next could give Marx a color scheme referencing Marx's soul, the aforementioned form that you fight as the final boss in the true arena of Superstar Ultra. And the final color could be another original one to also fit another Kirby series color theme, making dark Marx. Which is kind of weird to think about. Would it be an eviler Marx? Is that even possible? Maybe he's actually a nice Marx. That'd be a funny plot twist. Anyways, for Marx's stage intro, he'd simply teleport on screen while doing his creepy laugh with his wings out. Just like how he appears in his boss fights, though he would retract his wings at the end of the animation. For taunts, his first can just have him bouncing on his ball and reenact his pose from Star Allies. His second can have him just pull out his wings and look towards the camera while making his creepy chuckle. And his final can make reference to one final attack that I really wasn't able to incorporate into the attacks, but I really didn't want to exclude it. It's the final brand new attack that he was given in Ultimate, where Marx turns his eyes a pitch black, and then they just fall out of his head, leading him to grow new eyes. He'd do just that for his taunt, while also chuckling. You know, just to give you guys something to think about while laying in bed at night. And finally, for his victory animations, the first can have Marx rolling on his ball and then pose on top of it. Nice, simple, and the only one that's not nightmare-inducing. His second will just start with nothing on screen. The camera will look around trying to find Marx until it turns around and sees him just standing there staring into the camera with his soulless eyes. This mostly makes reference to his introduction right before you fight him in Smash Ultimate. And his final can just have Marx laughing as he flies around on screen and ends with a shot of him from below flying in place. And right behind him in the sky, you'd see the Comet Nova penetrating the atmosphere. Because you failed to stop Marx, impending doom is now closing in on the planet. Uh, yeah. Thank goodness he's just the boss in that case. But anyways, that does it for What If Marx Was In Smash! Certainly another villain that would bring all kinds of nasty tricks to the table, and certainly one that you do not want to clown around with. But since his inclusion as a fighter more than likely isn't happening anytime soon, you can at least enjoy his boss fight for the time being instead.
Anyways, if you liked what you saw and would like to see even more characters be given possible Smash movesets, be sure to subscribe! And if you'd like to support the show and help me be able to make more content for you guys while also getting some perks for doing so, you can click the join button either below the video or on my main page to become a member of my channel. I really appreciate anything that can be contributed. And of course, if you have a character that you'd like to see be given a possible Smash moveset, leave a comment down below or contact me on Twitter at BrawlFail1 on Twitch. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you so much for watching!